Dimensions and Measures in Tableau. So once we connect our data to Tableau, Tableau gonna analyze our data in order to assign each of our fields to either a dimension or measure. This kind of metadata is gonna help Tableau to blot our visualizations. All right, so now the question is, what is dimensions and measures? Well, Tableau didn't invent the concept of dimensions and measures. It is an old concept of BI. And now we're gonna have a quick origin story. If you learn the concepts of data warehousing and business intelligence, you might already know that the core concept is the multi-dimensional OLAB, online analytical processing. So the concept says, if you want to answer the business questions or do data analysis, first we have to build a data model that has the shape of a cube with multi-dimensions. It's something like this cube and each cube has two informations. First, we have the dimensions of the cube and the second informations, we have those cells. Those cells can store informations like data, numbers, and we call it measures. So each cube has two informations, the dimensions and the cells, the measures. And now let's have an example. We have the cube of cells and it has three dimensions. The first dimension is the locations and inside the locations, we have three members, USA, France, and Germany. Those three values are the member of the dimension location. And we have another dimension called time and it has three members in the dimension, January, February, and March. And the third dimension, we have the categories. And now inside the cells of the cube, we have the measure cells. So now our cube is ready with the dimensions and measure, and we can start answering the business questions. For example, find the total sales in USA. So what's gonna happen, we can select the dimension location and filter the dimension to have only the member USA. This operation in the cube, we call it slicing the cube. And then we're gonna aggregate the measure and we will get the total sales of 120. And if we have cube, we can do multiple operations like slicing, dicing, roll up, drill down and pivot. So if you have such a cube, we can do data analysis and find fast answers to the business questions. So now to summarize, dimensions contain qualitative values. They usually describe something like the product name, the product category, customer location, and we use dimensions to categorize, filter, and show the level of details. And in the other hand, we have the measures. They contain numeric quantitative values that can be measured like the name says. And the measures, unlike the dimensions, they can be aggregated. All right, so this might be still confusing. And if you say, you know what, if I look to my data, how do I decide whether it's a dimension or a measure? So here is my decision making process. First, I check the data type of the field, whether it is a number. If the answer is no, then this field is a dimension. But if the answer is yes, then we can ask the next question. Does it make sense to aggregate the values of the field? Like doing the sum calculation on the values or finding the average value. If the answer is yes, then it is a measure. But if the answer is no, then it is a dimension. So what this means, all non-numeric fields are dimensions, but not all numeric fields are measures. That really depends on the questions, whether it makes sense to aggregate the values. If yes, then it is a measure. If no, then it's a dimension. Okay, so now let's practice in order to understand the concept of dimensions and measures and how they work. We will check our data sets and we're gonna assign each field to either dimension or measure. We're gonna do the table customers together and then you can go and pause the video in order to do the products and the orders. And then add and we're gonna check the result together. So let's go. We're gonna start with the first field, the customer ID. The customer ID is a number, so we cannot say it is automatically a dimension. We're gonna jump to the next question. Now, does it make sense to aggregate it? Well, we have here to understand that the customer ID is a unique identifier for the customers. For example, Maria has the customer ID number one, Martin has four, and now if we sum all those values, we're gonna get the value of 15, or if we do the average, we're gonna get the value of three. Those values don't make any sense because we use the customer ID only to identify the customers. And I don't think that we will be in a situation where we have to find the average of the unique identifiers. So since it makes no sense, this field is a dimension. And with that, we can assign the customer ID to a dimension. Now let's go to the next one. It is much easier because we have here the first name and it is not numeric, so it is automatically a dimension. The same goes for the last name. It is as well a string. It is not a number. All right, so now let's move to the next one. We have the postcode or the zip code. It is a number, so we can ask the question, does it make sense to do aggregation here? Well, I don't think there will be a situation where we have to find the sum of the postcode or to find the average of it. So that means it is here again. It's a number 
but it is a dimension so let's assign the value for that and then the next one it is easy so we have the city and the country both of those values are string so it is automatically a dimension so let's assign it again Okay, so let's move to the last field. We have the score here. It's again a number. So we can ask the question, does it make sense here to do aggregations? Well, the answer is yes. It really makes sense to find the average of the score. That's why we're going to map it to a measure. So on the table customers, we have six dimensions and only one measure. And now you can go and pause the video in order to practice with the table orders and as well with the products. Alright, so now let's check the results. As you can see in the table orders, we have a lot of measures because it is a fact table. And fact tables in the star schema is the central place for the measures. So this is very normal. So let's check the fields. We have the order ID, customer ID, product ID. It is like the customer ID. Those are identifiers and it doesn't make sense to aggregate it. So that's why we have it as dimensions, the order date and shipping date. Those informations are not numeric and that means it is dimension. And then we have all those informations, the sales, quantity, discount, profit, unit prices. All those fields are numbers and here it makes sense to do aggregations like the sum or the average. So we're going to use the orders, the fact table if we need any measure. Let's go to the next one to the products. And here this one is easy. The product ID is like again the identifier. It doesn't make sense to do any aggregations we can have it as dimensions product name and category both of those informations are string they are non-numeric and that's why they are dimensions so i hope with this you have understood how i usually do it by just looking at the data we could decide whether it's a dimension or measure All right, so now back to Tableau and the first question is, where do I find in Tableau whether my fields are measures or dimensions? Well, there is no icons for dimensions and measures and as well, we cannot check that at the data source page. In order to check the dimensions and measures, we have to go to the worksheet page. So let's go to sheet number one. And then we're gonna go to the data pane on the left side over here. Let's open any table, for example, the orders. And now if you look closely to the table orders, you will find like fine gray horizontal line, which splits the fields of the orders into two groups. The fields above the line, they are the dimensions, and the fields below the line, they are the measures. So for example, we have the customer ID, the order dates, order ID, product ID, and so on. Those fields are dimensions in Tableau. And the fields below the line, the discounts, the quantity, sales, and so on, those fields are measures. And you can find this splitter, this horizontal line in each table. So if you go to the customers over here, you will see again the same line that splits dimensions from measures. And the same if you go to the products, scroll down, we have again the same line. And one more thing that you might already notice, let me just close those tables, that outside the table there is as well a horizontal line. Sometimes in Tableau we create fields that doesn't belong to any tables. And Tableau gonna put it just outside of the tables. It's like global fields. And for that we need as well a splitter to split the fields to dimensions and measures. Okay, so now let's go back to the orders and now you might say, you know what, we don't need this horizontal line to identify whether the field is dimension or measure. And now if the field has the color of blue, then it's dimension. And if the field has the color of green, then it is measure. Well, this is exactly where most of Tableau developers get confused and things get mixed up between dimensions measures and discrete continuous. And to be honest, I was thinking the same at the start until I found out that the color of the fields indicates whether the field is discrete or continuous. We're going to talk about this concept in the next tutorial. Don't worry about that. So the color does not indicate whether the field is dimension or measure, but the position of the fields, whether it's above the line or below the line. And let me show you quickly something. Let's take any fields over here, the product ID. Let's just drag it a little bit. And now Tableau is going to mark the horizontal line with orange and going to show you, okay, anything above is dimension and anything below is measures. So Tableau shows that as well. All right, so now to the next question, how do I change a field from dimension to measure and vice versa? And here you have two options. Either you're gonna do it globally for the whole workbook for all the views, or you might do the change locally in one individual view. So let's see how we can do that. Let's start with the first one where we're gonna do the change for the whole workbook for all views. So globally, we're gonna go, for example, let's take the order ID over here, just right click on it and then we go over here convert to measure so let's click on that and as you can see the field order id just jumped 
from above the line to below the line as a measure. And now if you want to change it back to dimension, just right click on it and then convert to dimension. So that's it, it's really easy. And now let's see how we can do the change locally at one view without affecting the whole workbook. So let's take again the order ID, drag and drop it over here. And here we're gonna right click on it on the view. And then we're gonna go to the measures. We're gonna convert it to a measure. Currently it is a dimension. So let's go to the measures and we have to select one of those calculations. So let's take for example the sum. And now as you can see the order ID only for this view is a measure but the order ID on the left side for the whole workbook it stays as dimension. And that's it, this is really easy how you can convert between measures and dimensions. Alright, so now let's have an example in Tableau in order to understand the main purpose of measures and dimensions. So let's go to the orders on the left side over here in the small data source and let's take one measure, the sales. We just gonna drag and drop it on the text over here. And as you can see, Tableau gonna start immediately doing aggregations on the measures. So now if we check the data, we have only one number. This is the total sales that we have in our data set. And now we are at the top level of details where everything is aggregated in only one number. And now we have to add more informations in order to understand this number. And in order to do that, we're gonna use dimensions. So for example, let's go to the products over here and let's take the category. So I'm just gonna drag and drop that category over here and as you can see now the dimension is splitting our measure into two rows so that means we have now one level lower of details than the top aggregation and now let's take another dimension we're gonna take the product name so let's just drag and drop it over here near the category and as you can see using this dimension gonna give us different level of details about the sales than the first dimension the category so what happened we just moved with the details one more level beneath that and now let's take third dimension we're gonna take now the order id from the orders so just drag and drop it near the product name and now as you can see this dimension gonna bring us to the lowest level of details where the aggregation of the measure is exactly the same origin value and as you can see the dimensions define the level of details in our views and each dimension gonna take us to different levels of details and always if you want to go to the top level of details you have to remove all dimensions and only have the measure so as you can see as we are removing those dimensions we are going to the top level of details another nice way to show that if we go to the tree map visualization so let me just go back over here to have one dimension let's go to show me and then click on the tree so now you can see our data is split it to only two details. So now as we add dimensions, let's take again the product name over here, drag and drop it on the label. You can see the view split it to more details. And if we go to the lowest level, if you take the order ID again over here to the label, we can see the view is split it furthermore. And now I'm gonna tell you a small secret. If you follow it, you can generate hundreds of reports even if you have small data sets if you combine any measure with any dimension you will be creating a new view or new reports with a title following this pattern measure by dimension for example sales by product profit by category quantity by country so if you follow this pattern you can generate endless amounts of reports and views in tableau all right so now if you count the dimensions and measures in our small data sets we have around 16 dimensions and 10 measures so that means if you follow this rule you can generate around 160 views and reports so even we have small data sets we can generate huge amounts of views and reports so as you can see on the visualizations if we combine both of them we're gonna have sales by order date sales by shipping date sales by country and so on all right so now let me just show you how we build usually reports in tableau using dimensions and measures we're gonna work now with only one measure the sales and we're gonna make dashboards about it so let's stay at the small data source and we're gonna take the sales from the orders let's just drag and drop it somewhere at the rows and now the dimension gonna be the product name so let's take the product name from the products let's drag and drop it over here so that's it now we have to call it sales by product so let's just rename the sheet over here right click on it and rename sales by product all right so now we're gonna create another one using the same measure but different dimension so what we're gonna do we're gonna just gonna go and duplicate it right click on it and duplicate we're gonna have now the sales by category i'm just gonna rename it again and let's call it sales by category 
And now we're going to remove the product name from here. So just drag and drop it somewhere at the white space. And then we go again to the products, drag and drop the category on the columns. And now we're going to use different visualizations. So I'm going to go to the show me over here and let's use the pie chart. So click on that. All right. So now we have like a pie chart, but I would like to show the values. So we go to the label over here, click on it and click on this mark, show mark labels in order to show some values. So that's it. This is our second one. All right. So now we're going to create the third one with another dimension. We're going to take the order dates, but we're going to show only the months. So we're going to go over here and duplicate it again. Let's just rename it. So I'm going to call it sales by month. So we will go now and remove that category. Just drop it here. And then let's take the order date, drag and drop it on the columns. We're going to switch the visualizations to par. So I'm going to click on this over here on the pars. So as you can see here, Tableau going to show the years of the order date. We want to have it as a month. So we have to switch that. Just right click on the dimension and then over here, just select the month. So let's do that. Let me just close the show me over here and then let's add some labels. All right, so that was it for this view. Let's make the last one. We're going to make sales by country. So let's duplicate this again. And we're going to call it sales by country. And then we're going to remove the dimension order date. And then we're going to take the dimension country. So just drag and drop it on the rows. So now since we have the country, we can change it to a map. So let's do that. We go to the show me over here and then select the map. Click on that. All right. So now we have a map showing the sales by country. All right. So now we have those four reports or sheets. We can build now a dashboard. In order to create a new dashboard, we're going to go to this icon over here. Click on it. And before we start, I'm just going to give it a name. So let's call it sales dashboard all right okay and now we're gonna go and drag and drop all the sheets so we're gonna start first with the country so let's just drop it here in the middle and then we're gonna take the category just beneath it then the product beside it let's resize a little bit to the left and then we're gonna take the last one the months and put it over here. And as you can see, with just four dimensions and one measure, we were able to make a dashboard about the sales. And just following this small rule, sales by country, sales by category, sales by product, and sales by month. So always measure by dimension. And now it's really easy to train. Just go and pick another measure with different dimensions and build different dashboards. So now let's have a quick summary where we're going to compare both dimensions and measures side by side in order to understand the differences between them. Let's start with the definition. Dimensions are fields that contains descriptive values and measures are fields that contains quantitative numeric values. For example, we have dimensions like product category, country and customer ID. And in the other hand, we have measures like sales, profit and quantity. The next point is about aggregating. Dimensions cannot be aggregated as each member of the dimension is unique. Measures, however, can be aggregated using functions like sum, average, min, max, and so on. For example, you can calculate the total sales for specific product category. Moving on to the data types, all different data types can be used as dimensions like string, date, boolean, and even numbers, like we have learned the customer ID. But only the fields with the data type number can be used as a measure. The next point is about the role of analysis. Dimensions are typically used for grouping, filtering, and organizing your data. And measures, on the other hand, are used for calculations and numeric analysis. And the final point is about the granularity. Dimensions define the level of details of the data. And the granularity of measures, on the other hand, determines the quantity being measured. So these are the main differences between dimensions and measures. Alright, so that's all about the dimensions and measures. Next, we will learn another important concept for data visualizations, the discrete and continuous roles in Tableau. And if you like my content and you want to support the channel, then I really appreciate it if you support, like and comment. This is really gonna help the YouTube algorithm. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye.